Running and diet should not be seen as separate entities. They should be two sides of the same coin. Okay, maybe not exactly like that. But there are a number of diet myths around running that seem to persist year on year. And if we want to get the most out of our running, we need to bust those myths. So bust them, we will. And if you learn something new, consider subscribing to learn more something new. Now this myth is as good as any as a starting place and that is the one that I hear probably the most as a coach that if you start running you're gonna lose weight and to a certain extent that is true if you consistently run week after week then you probably are gonna at least maintain if not lose some weight but it isn't as simple as I'm gonna start running I'm gonna lose weight so what I often get is confused athletes at the start of their coaching journey with me that once they've been running for a few weeks or months, they haven't lost weight, and so they don't think it's working. But actually, the reason it's not working is one of the first things that happen when you start your running journey is, you'll probably have a little bit of excess fat, and then you start to shed it when you run, and you replace that, your body starts building new muscle, which is heavier than fat. So you feel like you're not losing weight, but what you're actually doing, you're switching fat for muscle. That's in the early days. So remember this quote I'm about to give you. You can't outrun a bad diet. You cannot have bad eating habits, eat too much, and think that running is gonna be the quick fix to you losing weight. Because actually, running is not a particularly efficient way of losing weight. I'm gonna walk so I can talk. Here's what you do, it's easy. Supplement your running with strength training because the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn naturally. Therefore, it's easier to maintain weight, but also, Watch what you're eating. Really have a look at what calories are going in, what quality they are, and also portion distortion. Are you eating just too much for your need? And once you start to figure out those pinch points, then you probably will start losing weight from running. But starting running to lose weight, that's not a given. That is, that's a myth. And the second diet myth that seems to persist is that if you're a runner and you get dehydrated, what you need to do to rehydrate is drink water. Now that's not strictly true. Oh, it's gone dark because all you need to do is look at my dogs to tell you that ain't just water. That's a treat. So when you run, you lose fluid, not water. Because you also lose things like sodium and potassium, things that we call electrolytes that your body uses to kind of function properly. And so if you just put water back in, you're not really putting back in what you've lost. So with simple things like this electrolyte tablet, obviously I'm a Bix fanboy, not gonna lie, Vlad is a friend of mine, so I'm gonna support his company, but there are lots of electrolyte tablets on the market. But one of those, a few times a day, depending on the climate you live in, is enough to redress the balance. So when we were in the UK, I drank a lot more water than I did electrolyte and just electrolyte when I was exercising, but as soon as we moved to Thailand, and we were getting headaches for the first few weeks and months that we were here, we quite quickly realized we were sweating a lot more and we need to put it back in. Cheers. Myth three is that there is a 30 minute window of opportunity after you've exercised to replenish what you've just spent. So when it comes to protein, when it comes to carbohydrates, the theory goes that you've got about 30 good minutes to get that food back in. It's a myth. And yeah, while it is true to say that the sooner you put fuel back in, the better, there isn't, it's like 30 minutes and then after 30 minutes, it's of no benefit. Researchers have found out that the window is, is slightly longer than you think it is. I have a pen, I have a pineapple. No, the truth is actually a lot more relaxing and it's that actually dependent on what you've done, if you've eaten before, you don't really need to fuel necessarily quickly after, or if you've had a really easy run again, don't really need to replenish the stores that quickly, but the window is much more like up to two hours than it is 30 minutes. So if you have to do something like walk the dogs like we've just done, relax, it's all right. You're gonna be able to put the energy back in within the two hours after exercise rather than the 30 minute window. And myth four, hot on the heels of myth three, is that coffee is a diuretic and what diuretic means is that it dehydrates you. 
I suppose the fear is with caffeine is that people think if they drink it before a race, they're gonna need to go for a wee during the race, and obviously that's gonna slow them down first thing, but also it means that they're gonna become dehydrated during the race. But what research has shown is that the diuretic properties of caffeine don't really kick in until you had quite big doses of caffeine. So while one coffee before a race, which is traditionally what Mary and I would do, that's absolutely fine. There's no diuretic effect that's gonna happen from there. Maybe though, if you drink seven or eight cups before a race, yes, you may well dehydrate yourself and need to wee while you're racing. So while it's not completely a myth that coffee or caffeine is a diuretic, it is a myth that any caffeine is a diuretic. You'd have to have it in quite big doses for it to take effect. Now, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee and my breakfast on the balcony. One myth that just persists over and over again for me, and I've talked about it multiple times, is that carbohydrates are in some way bad. Bad for you in life, bad for you in training. Somehow it's just become fashionable to see carbohydrates as the enemy. As in, if you eat them, you're gonna put on weight, or you're not gonna train your body as efficiently if you're using carbohydrates as your energy source. Let me just debunk double myth right now. So the first part of it is if you eat carbohydrates, you're gonna put on weight, and I mean, that is true, but that's true of anything because the way that energy works is if you eat more than you expend, you're gonna put on weight. If you eat less than you expend, you're gonna lose weight. So that could be the same for carbohydrates, protein, fats. It's just that carbohydrates are obviously high and low quality of source in abundance like potato and rice. But they're not the devil. They are your body's fuel system. So when people say, eat low carbohydrate, high fat, because then you'll train your body to metabolize fat rather than carbohydrate when you're exercising. To a small extent, that might be true. But here's one question for you, and I mean this genuinely, I'm not saying it in any way to provoke, but give me an example of any runner that is at the highest level, marathon or below, that doesn't eat carbs. Try and find one because the fact is you can train your body to be a bit better at metabolizing fats, like using fats and sparing the carbohydrates. But let me tell you, when push comes to shove and you're in a high intensity race or you're running uphill or your heart rate goes out of zone two, you're gonna need carbohydrates eventually. And if you don't have them in your body, it's gonna be a pretty torrid affair. So carbohydrates are not the devil. They are not bad. They should be a fundamental part of your diet. One of the more scary diet myths is that if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. Um, the reason that people think that this is a fact is because they just hear the word fat and they just put the two together and think fat makes you fat. But here's the breakdown. Any food you eat, if you eat it in excess quantities and you don't burn it off, you're going to put on weight. That's not just restricted to fat. The only reason that people are scared of fats really is that, you know, calorie speaking, fat is more calorie heavy than maybe carbohydrate or protein. But if you eat too many carbs and you don't burn carbs off, you put on weight. It's that simple. So fat doesn't make you fat. There are in fact good fats that you need to eat and you need to eat them for a whole range of reasons. Good skin, good hair, good metabolism lots of internal processes in the body. And let me give you a couple of examples of maybe some good fats. Eggs, avocado, nuts, whole milk, all good fats. And then of course you've got the bad fats that are essentially the processed foods that have the fat in them like McDonald's fries or KFC chicken. But you need a balanced amount of fat. It is that simple, don't be afraid of it. Actually, scientists think that good fat can actually help you lose weight rather than gain weight if you do it in the right amounts. So there you go, permission to eat avocado, granted. A myth that seems to persist is around that of carb loading before a race. And that is to say, increase Increasing your intake of carbohydrates in the days before a race so that you've got more stored energy on race day. In fact, the early idea was to restrict your carbohydrates from maybe eight to four days out from a race and then load up and your body's gonna store even more. But here's the issue. In the restriction phase, you feel awful. And then in the loading phase with the extra stored carbs comes extra stored fluid. And that leaves you feeling bloated and perhaps sluggish. That doesn't sound ideal to me. So the now more commonly accepted method is that you just slightly increase your carbohydrate intake three to four days before events that last over 90 minutes. And you make it a mixture of complex carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates. And that's to say pasta and potato and things like that. And then rice or sugar and foods like that. But but the key is to not go overboard with it or the feeling of bloatedness and sluggishness will still occur if you do. There are performance benefits, but I've got to say it's a fine line. 
I say, if you haven't practiced it in training, then nothing new on race week or race day. Another myth we want to bust is fasted runs and how much they can benefit your running performance. Oh, and by the way, fasted runs mean running without having eaten before in the morning. The reason people might want to do fasted runs are firstly out of necessity, because they're crunched for time, that they're trying to squeeze a run in at the start of the day, which we get. But the other reason is that people are trying to get their body to utilize fat as a fuel source over carbohydrate. And the main limiters or problems with fasted runs is that there's actually quite a specific time of the run, intensity of the run, on numbers of times you can do it per week to actually get any benefit. Let's talk about time. So there's limited benefit up to 40 minutes. There is benefit between 40 minutes and one hour 15. That's more noticeable. But after one hour 15, it decreases. And that's when your body's gonna need to take on some carbohydrates to maintain your energy and the quality of your run. So it's quite a specific, quite a limited time frame for you to get any benefit from the fasted run. And the intensity bit is easy because it should always be an easy run if you're running fasted. And in terms of the amounts of time a week you should do them really, experts recommend one to two is enough to get the benefit you need from doing fasted runs. So we're not saying fasted runs are of no benefit, but there is a lot you need to take into account to get a good benefit from them. Another myth that seems to persist when it comes to diet and running is that the older you get, the less you need to eat. So while there is some truth to that myth in the, as you get older, you do need less calories, it's not as simple as just eat less. So the reason for less calories tends to be that you're less active, that you have less muscle mass as you get older, so you don't need to eat as much. But as you get older, there are things you need to eat more of. And if you maintain an active lifestyle, or even if you don't maintain an active lifestyle into old age, you actually need to eat more protein than someone that's much younger than you because your body becomes desensitized to protein. Because as you eat more protein, it does maintain that muscle mass that deteriorates as you get older, and then that can ward off any type of injury or problems that you could have without it. This is halloumi and black bean tacos, by the way. Also more vitamins and minerals, of course, because the body is unfortunately in a state of decline. So you do everything you can to slow the rate of decline. So I guess the myth I'm trying to bust is not that we don't have to eat less calories as we get older, we do, but it's the type of calories that we eat. That's the important thing because there are certain things you have to eat more of as you get older. So I wouldn't want anyone to just cut down on every calorie as they get older because that isn't gonna benefit you. And now I have to tuck into my halloumi and black bean tacos, which are delicious by the way. Mary might start a cooking channel. Mmm. Oh, hi. How about this for a diet myth that needs to be busted immediately? That somehow eating just before you go to bed or late at night means that you're gonna put on weight much more easily. And it's all based on the false idea that our metabolism slows down once we go to sleep. But let me tell you right now that the energy cost of sleep has been calculated to be about the same as our basal metabolic rate, as in what our body is doing and the calories it's consuming when we're at rest during the day. Oh yes. The fact is, our body is equipped to metabolize food, calories, 24-7. It doesn't know the difference between day and night, hours of the day. It's literally a machine that does this all of the time. Mm. Now to be fair, one of the other reasons that this myth might persist is because there is evidence that if you eat late at night you might gain weight in the long term, but it's more to do with your habits and the type of person you are than the fact that you're eating late at night. A person that eats late at night has been sometimes found to have a higher calorie intake overall anyway, and that's where maybe that myth also comes from. So in short, no, there's no golden time point at which you have to stop eating, otherwise you're gonna put on weight more easily. So crack on, eat what you need, not what you want, and don't fear eating late and putting on weight. Doesn't work like that. Hang on, I need a bit of privacy. I hope the video brought you value. If it did, consider subscribing to the channel, but never a hard sell. And if you like this video, then let's go all the way back to the start of this strand where I created 10 things that runners should know, but probably don't. And I hope it adds value to your day. By the time you're watching this, one week until we are running New York. So stay tuned, make sure you follow the journey here and on Instagram. And I'll see you on Sunday.